Rob Marbury is a co-founder of the Minnesota Association of Rogue Taxidermists, who now lives in Brooklyn. He says that rogue taxidermy has become very popular in New York City, but journalists have only been interviewing New York artists, who don't really get it, he says. So we got in touch with other rogues across the country and abroad to hear what they had to say about taxidermy, life, and death. We started by talking to Scott Bibus, another co-founder of MART. He lives in Minnesota. It's sort of my drive to do taxidermy it comes from a long-standing predilection with death and a sort of obsession with the, you know, mortality. Uh, but it's something I can remember from very young. I remember very clearly an incident when I was probably no more than seven of just sitting in my basement and realizing clear as day that I was going to die someday. And like I ran upstairs and hugged my mom and I was like, I don't want to die. And, and since then, it's been a very constant overbearing kind of fear in my life. And so I'm hoping to understand a little bit about what it is that draws me to that. Bonnie lives in England and has been a member of Mart for just three weeks. Her views on death are more positive. She used to suffer from insomnia, and one day she had a vision of the Virgin Mary surrounded by dying animals, representing sleep and comfort. For her, taxidermy is a way of preserving dead animals through eternal sleep. Both Scott and Bonnie try to gain a deeper understanding of themselves through their art. Scott tries to understand why he is obsessed with death, but Bonnie, on the other hand, is more concerned with life. I don't think I work to better understand my own mortality. I think I, I, I'm working with death more to come to terms of life. I find life probably more confusing than I find death confusing. <laughs> in Western society, people are really hidden from it, and it's, it's really censored, and I think that's a very unhealthy way to treat death because then it's... Uh, people then become like a hell of a lot more fearful of it and then if you do kind of embrace it people then look on you as being like pretty weird or macabre or something whereas I think it's um, a healthy morbid, morbid curiosity is a healthy thing. Well the work I do essentially is normal taxidermy where the animal instead of looking alive looks very dead um, and often dead in very graphic ways, uh, with lots of blood, exposed entrails, that sort of thing. Taxidermy never really reflects the more seedy side of animal life. It's often, you know, it's a buck in full rut with his beautiful antlers or uh, a magnificent turkey kind of strutting through an idyllic, you know, wildlife setting. Uh, but I kind of choose to reflect the more uh, macabre aspects of animal life, which I think is more in keeping with the spirit of what taxidermy is as it, at its essence, which is uh, you know, the displaying of the remains of a dead animal. So I don't think I could do what I do if um, the animals had been killed for me. I don't think it would justify my artwork. None of these animals I wanted dead, but they have died. I would, well, personally, I would prefer if I died, instead of being left to rot, to be made into something amazing, where I get people me as not liking my work, and that really pisses me off because I don't think that they've been given the right to judge it when they're like willingly partaking in animal cruelty. They don't have that same visceral reaction when they walk past the bologna in the lunch meat counter. Like the American food industry sort of mechanizes the process, hides all the kind of gross, bloody uh, <laughs> things that would make it a hard decision to, to kill an animal and eat it from view. And when I go to the store, I don't have to buy a pig. I don't have to slaughter it. I don't have to cook the meat. I can just buy this package that says ham on it bring it home and enjoy, uh, you know, some delicious ham without having to undergo the ethical dilemma of whether or not I want to murder a pig. But we as human beings are kind of transient animals, and we die, and we're always looking to grasp a sense of permanence. When we look out at the world and we see things we desire, we want to hold them in a state uh, that will last for eternity, which is sort of an illusion. And I think taxidermy is sort of a way of trying to like meld, you know, that desire for permanence with the truth of the world, which is transient. 